Christine Hernandez, Livestock Specialist for Heifer USA at Heifer Ranch in Perryville, Arkansas. Thank you so much for watching this YouTube video on how we raise our pastured poultry. We will cover topics ranging from setting up our brooder, caring for the turkeys while they're in the brooder, bringing them out to pasture, and then their whole life out on pasture. As you're watching this video, if you find value in it, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you have any questions, leave a comment below or email us at heiferusa at heifer.org. With our turkey brooder, we are using a existing barn and we just use the stalls to make multiple different brooder rooms that allows for expansion as the turkey poults age. Our brooder space is composed of two rooms and an outdoor covered pen area. As members of the Grassroots Farmers Cooperative, we adhere to the grassroots spacing standards for our turkeys, and these increase weekly as the turkeys grow. For the first week, we allot the turkeys at least one third square foot per turkey poult, meaning that with 500 turkeys, our brooder space should be at least 165 square feet. When the turkey poults arrive, they go to room one, which is 13 by 13 feet. With our first room, that's where we're really going to concentrate that heat and have their food and water everywhere and make it 95 degrees back there for them. Once they are one week old, we'll give them access to room number two, which is also 13 feet by 13 feet. Turkey poults can't regulate their body heat until they're around 10 to 14 days old. So we really just need to, to make sure that we are providing them with the proper environment and the proper heat. And with those two rooms, we'll decrease that temperature by one degree each day or roughly five degrees a week until the turkeys can regulate their own body temperature and they will be at the ambient temperature that's outside that we'll put them into when they go out to pasture. And to help do that, we also give our turkeys access to outside with a covered pen, and that will also help them acclimate to the outdoor temperature. That's really important because we will be doing three batches of turkeys this year, starting in March and going through November. And so it's, it's important for the turkeys to be ready to go out to pasture depending on that season. The outdoor covered pen is also 13 feet by 13 feet and it's enclosed with wooden fencing as well as horse panels so the turkey poults cannot go through and get out. We've added a small door and a ramp so the turkey poults can easily move from room number two to the outdoor covered pen. We will keep the turkeys in the brooder for four to six weeks until they go out to pasture. Uh, once they're that, that three to six week range, we give them access outside and then we'll bring them in and, and lock them in at nighttime just to keep predators away and to keep them safe. With turkeys being vulnerable, you wanna make sure to not rush them out to pasture. And so with that four to six weeks, you're really looking to see if those turkeys are acclimated to the outdoor temperature, uh, if the weather outside is going to be appropriate for you to expose them out to pasture, uh, in the springtime, you know, if it's going to be raining and really cold at nighttime, you might want to keep them in the brooder for a week longer until the weather gets a little bit nicer. But that's where you make sure that you have calculated for extra space to keep those turkeys in there for just a few more days. It's not necessary for you to give your turkeys access to outside or even to pasture while they're still in your brooder. We do that because we needed that extra space as the turkeys were growing. Our insulated covered area is only so big. And so just to allow them to be outside, you know, give them a little bit more space, we are giving them that space through a covered outdoor area. If you're not able to do that, that's okay. You just need to make sure that your turkeys are acclimated to the outdoor temperature before you take them out of your brooder. We are here in our turkey brooder. The turkey poults will arrive here shortly. We are just going to go over how we have our brooder set up and everything we have to have ready for their arrival. Three important things for your brooder is to make sure that it is kept clean, it's kept dry, and it is kept warm. Those three elements are essential to produce a healthy flock. You want to prepare for your turkey arrival a few days before they're going to get here. 
You wanna make sure that all of your feeders and your waters and your pans are clean and sanitized. You want to put your, your flooring down, whatever you're going to use, whether it's shavings or peat moss. You want to turn on your heat source. For our turkeys this year, we will be using multiple heat lamps hanging from the ceiling and we'll secure those in two or three different ways. So from a chain and some zip ties, as well as the cord that plugs it into the outlet. We are using two different types of heat lamps in our brooder. These metal ones are simple ones that you can just purchase from your local farmer's co-op or from the tractor supply store. I really like Premier One hanging heat lamps. They are structured better. They're more reliable to be using in a brooder situation like this. So we are using a 250 watt red light bulb. You can just get those from your local uh, co-op or from any hardware store. You want to make sure to use red because that is going to allow the poultry to, to sleep and to rest rather than having a white light bulb in there. You want to turn those on at least 24 hours before your turkey poults get here. That way the room is up to temperature. The floor is at the proper temperature. You need to be very careful if you're using heat lamps. They, they can be rather dangerous. Um, so make sure that they're secured in multiple ways. If it's too hot in the brooder space for the turkeys, the way you lower the temperature is to raise that heat lamp further away from the ground. If you observe that your turkey poults are all huddled together underneath your heat lamp, then that's a sign that they are cold. Okay, so they are trying to, to get underneath that heat and warm up. So you may need to lower your heat lamp or increase the temperature if you're using a, a different heat source. If they're all piled in, in a corner or on one side of your brooder, that might mean that there's a draft coming in somewhere. Turkeys and chicks are very vulnerable to drafts and they do not like drafts whatsoever. So if you, you come in and observe that, you need to figure out where that draft is coming from and, and take care of that. If the turkeys are all spread out uh, as far apart as I can get, and it looks like they're, they're laying flat on the ground, then they're probably too hot. So it's important that you have some sort of, of thermometer so you can know what the temperature is. We have a indoor outdoor thermometer. The thermometer will give you two separate readings. So the, the temperature at the turkey level and then the temperature wherever that second monitor is placed. So you'll need to also pay attention to the humidity within your brooder. If it's a wet humidity, then your temperature doesn't necessarily need to be at 95. It may need to be lower than that. Whatever makes those turkey poults comfortable. If it's a dry humidity, you may need to increase that temperature. Due to the re-renovation of this brooder space for our turkeys, our option was to use heat lamps. It's what we have available. We didn't want to purchase anything really new to put in here. Other ways to heat your brooder would be with propane heat hoods or a radiant heater. Sometimes when producers use those, they will use corrugated cardboard and make rings underneath those heaters so that they concentrate those turkeys underneath that heat source instead of giving them um, a whole room or a whole space. Now I'll just go over the other pieces of equipment that you will have in your brooder. When the turkey poults get here, you want to make sure that you have food and water available to them everywhere. We use corrugated cardboard and we just put the food directly on top of the cardboard. We want those turkeys to be able to walk onto the food, scratch it, eat it, lay in it, all that good stuff. So they can go right on top of that food and start consuming it. Uh, we will keep the cardboard down here for two or three days and then we'll, we'll take that away and use other feeders in, in that place. You can use anything that is flat and you can put directly on the ground that can hold a, a good amount of food for the turkeys to, to get on there and start eating. So in addition to the cardboard, we also have some rectangle feed pans. We just bought these from a local poultry equipment store. Uh, you can probably get them from, from your local co-op, but that serves the same purpose as the cardboard. These you can wash and sanitize and reuse again. Um, we will use these red pans a little bit longer into our, our brooding timeline compared to the cardboard, uh, but those will hold um, just as much feed, if not more, and allows the, the turkey poults to get on there and start consuming food right away. 
Turkeys are going to require a little bit of a different ration compared to your broiler chickens. They need a higher percent protein to start off with. We start ours at a 26% protein. If you don't have a, a place where you can regulate that ration, you can buy um, game starter from, from your co-op. That percent protein will be a little bit higher. You can also take some hard boiled eggs, shell and all, and just uh, crumble them over top of their feed. And that will increase the amount of protein that they're getting as well. Due to our feed storage space, we don't have a available bin to have our feed unloaded into. So we just use these um, one ton tote bags and we'll have a couple of them here at a time. We can easily move them around the farm with a front end loader of a tractor. And then to get the feed out of here, we'll just scoop it up with a five gallon bucket, a coffee can, or, or just a scoop to, to fill that bucket up if we're not able to scoop up enough. We are using a non-GMO ration that consists of cracked corn, roasted soybeans, and a number of different ingredients. As you're placing your feed and water out in your brooder, getting ready for your poults to arrive, you really wanna think about where you're placing them at. You don't wanna place your feed and water directly under your heat lamp, because if the turkeys are too warm, you don't want them to have to be underneath that heat to eat and drink. I like to place the water in the feed around the, the heat circle that the heat lamp is, is putting off. That way they can be near the heat or cool off if, if they would like. You want your feed and water to be throughout your whole brooder space when your turkeys first arrive and you want those to be very dense so that there's plenty of space for the, all the turkeys to eat and all the turkeys to drink. And then no matter where the turkey goes, you want them to run into either food or water. That's going to really help increase their, their consumption and then that will help produce a healthier flock. With this new brooder space, we don't have automated water lines. Um, that would be something that I would add into this brooder space if we use it again. Uh, so instead of water lines, we are just using temporary waterers. We have a few five gallon waterers that we will use as well as some one gallon waterers. We use both of these for, um, for other poultry as well, so they're, they're multi-purpose. Um, it's important that you, that you have enough food space and enough water space for all of the poultry to eat and drink at the same time. It, it is water that is going to drive the feed consumption, so you always want to make sure that there's water available. If at chore time you come in and all the waters are empty, that's going to tell you that you need to add more waterers. You need to make sure that there's water available all the time. With the bigger five gallon waterers, the, the amount of space for the, for the water to fill is deeper and bigger than with the one gallon waterers. So if you start having turkeys get into that water, you can always simply take marbles and put them in that water trough space and that will make your water more shallow so your turkeys can't get in there and get soaking wet um, and that may cause additional issues. So the, the marbles will make your water more shallow. It'll still allow for the turkeys to drink, they just can't get into it. And these may actually help attract the turkeys to the water. Turkeys are notorious for not being very good water drinkers. Anything to help encourage them to drink water is important. After we take away the cardboard feeder space, we will introduce a different feeder to the turkeys, and that may be one of these turbo feeders. These hold about 10 pounds of food, and there's a little trough here. Um, once they're about 10 or 12 days old, these are a little small for them, so they're only useful for a few days. And then we may switch to um, one of these five gallon bucket feeders. It's a Featherman feeder that will hold about 25 pounds of food. Then we'll also hang our red cool feeders that hold 30 pounds of food. And those are the feeders that the turkeys will use for the rest of their time here at the ranch. Ventilation inside your brooder is very important. With this new space that we created, we just simply got a few window fans and mounted them in the walls. So this fan is bringing air from outside into our brooder. So it's replenishing the air in the brooder with fresh air. And then we have a fan opposite this on a different wall, and that is taking the air inside this brooder space outside. 
So we're just circulating the air. You wanna make sure that you're able to do that about six to eight times a day. So having one of these on a timer would be excellent. So it's important to keep this fan on to help keep a fresh circulation of air within your brooder. We mounted this fan um, high up on the wall so that fresh air could come in, but it, so that it doesn't create a draft on the pulse. So you don't have to set it up exactly like this. You just wanna make sure that you have a flow of fresh air coming into your brooder. You could place this in an existing window or create a space for it in a wall, whatever works best for you and your space. There are a number of different types of, of bedding you can use for turkeys. In the past, we've used uh, Kinlan dried pine shavings. That's what we use for our chickens right now as well. This year, I am trying out peat moss. The reason why I am switching to peat moss is because the turkeys will not try to consume the peat moss like they would with the pine shavings. Our early mortalities will hopefully be decreased with that. Peat moss is going to be more expensive than a bag of pine shavings. Peat moss will go a little bit further. And so at the end of your, your brooding timeline, those two should equal out. You should spend the same amount of money on pine shavings as you would on peat moss. You're just gonna have to use more bags of pine shavings throughout the whole brooder time. Uh, they're not as absorbent. They don't control the ammonia smell as well as the peat moss does. With peat moss, you can go ahead and clean out your brooder and put it directly on your garden. With the pine shavings, you're gonna have to, to compost those down for a long time. Another pro to using peat moss is that the turkeys really enjoy to take a dust bath in it. So as we're putting down more peat moss, um, they will all come over and just start uh, rolling around and dusting themselves in it. Um, so you may get it on, on your heat lamps or on your fans and, and things like that, and that's okay. Uh, the peat moss is going to get in your water and on your food. Um, it's not gonna hurt the turkey poults at all. It's just gonna make things look a little messy, but that's okay. You can easily clean all that up. Behind me, you can see that our corner is rounded off. Turkeys are notorious for piling up in corners and that can cause the ones on the bottom to suffocate. So we just have a simple piece of plywood back there and then we use corrugated cardboard to round off that corner even more. And you wanna keep your corners rounded for at least the first week and a half or two until they start being more active and starting to fly and, and jump onto things. You want to remove those corners before they're old enough to, to fly up on there and, and try to perch on there and then potentially fall behind there and, and other turkeys will join them and cause a pile up. If you don't have the corrugated cardboard or, or plywood that you can put there, there are other materials you can use to round off your corners. Whatever, whatever you have, whatever works for you and your farm. There are a number of different places that you can purchase your turkey poults from. Turkey poults are gonna be more expensive than a chick. On average, they're gonna be anywhere from about $6 to $12, depending if you want a production breed compared to a heritage breed. You just need to, to know what you want and then um, look for that out there. Ordering your turkey poults, there will more than likely be a minimum number that you have to order. So when you do that, make sure you have enough equipment and breeder space for the number of turkeys you order. If you order them from a well-known hatchery, they'll more than likely show up through the mail. So your local post office will call you when they arrive there for you to come and pick them up. They will be roughly two to three days old by the time you get them. We get our turkey poults from a hatchery out of Virginia. So being a part of the Grassroots Farmers Co-op, we have a member that will go and pick up those turkey poults and deliver them to us turkey farmers. By the time we get them, they are just over a day old. Ordering them through the mail, you may have the option of adding in like an extra nutrient pack or an electrolyte pack. Um, I would recommend that just because you don't know how, how stressful that transport is going to be on them. Once our turkey poults arrive here, we want to get all of our boxes, bring them into our brooder, 
make sure we, we close the door behind us so that we can really keep that heat in here. And then we'll space those boxes around our brooder. And then we're gonna go one box at a time. We will take out one pole at a time. We'll dip their beaks in the sugar water. We put one cup of sugar per gallon of water, and that just helps give those turkey poults a little bit of a boost to energy because they just traveled all the way here. They were just hatched um, about a day ago. So we dip each beak in the sugar water. As we're doing that, we wanna keep track of how many turkeys we are putting out. That way we know how many turkeys we're starting with. That way we make sure we get the number of turkeys that we actually ordered. So I will dip their beak and then I will go and place that turkey poult on their food. We will use the same record template that we used for our broilers. So we want to write down the initial number of turkey poults that we receive, the date they got here, if they're a, a special breed or anything like that, we'll record that. We will be raising broad-breasted whites this year. We keep track of the number of bags of bedding that we put down, whether that's going to be pine shavings or the peat moss. We'll keep track of how many buckets of feed that we give out, and we'll keep track of any mortality losses that occur. We will leave the overhead lights on for three days, and so that's to ensure that the turkey poults will be up, and that encourages them to, to eat their food and, and drink their water for the first 72 hours, and then after that, we will set the lights to a timer. We have our overhead lights connected to a light timer, so no one has to come back and, and physically do that. We also have a separate switch for the heat lamps. That way the, we don't have to go around and unplug each individual heat lamp. We can just do it with the switch. Turkeys are very vulnerable and fragile. So it's important that we spend a lot of time with them when they first get here. They need a, a mother figure. They need to imprint on somebody. And so if you can spend as much time as possible in your brooder, for the first couple of weeks when those turkeys get here. So they develop a relationship with you that will make them happier, that will have them eat more and drink more. It's important to observe them, not just during your chore time. So if you can observe them in between chore times and really just take a look in here and see what it is that they're doing, it's during that chore time that you come in here and, and you disturb what they're doing. So you're gonna change their water, you're gonna give them more feed, they're gonna get up and be more active than if you weren't here. So if you just peek in and make sure everyone is doing okay, so they're not crowding in the corners, they're not huddling underneath the heat lamp, those are signs you need to look for that you may need to change a few things in your brooder. To help teach the turkeys to, to eat their food and to drink their water right off the bat, we are going to put in some week old broiler chicks with them. So they should, should watch those chicks and learn from them. Uh, when you're doing that, you need to make sure that there's still going to be enough feeder space, enough water space, because you're adding more beaks than just the number of turkeys that you ordered. Uh, you only wanna leave the chicks in here for the, the first two weeks or so um, until the turkeys start, start messing with them and then take them out and put them back with their broiler flock. If you don't have broiler chicks to put in here with your turkeys, that's okay. You just need to make sure that you're able to spend time with them and that they can imprint on you and start that relationship. It's very important for turkeys at every age to have access to grit, which is just granite rocks. A lot of people think that when you're raising turkeys on pasture that they can just get grit from the soil and from the ground but it's actually really important to offer it to them so they have access to it all the time. And so we give them free choice grit. For the turkeys, we start when they're just a couple days old and the grit will come in, in different sizes, different diameters. So we use cherry stone grit and we just get that from our local feed co-op. So for the young turkeys, we start with grit number one and we will just top dress their feed with that so we can just go ahead and, and sprinkle it on top of those rectangle pans so that the turkeys have, have access to it while they're eating. After about two weeks old, they will get access to grit number two. 
and then they'll move on to grit number three and four at their appropriate ages. So grit is important for, for all poultry to have because the way poultry eat and grind up their food is a part of their stomach is called the gizzard. And so that's going to be their mechanical stomach. So after it goes from their crop down into their gizzard, they're actually breaking that down and, and grinding it down. So having access to that grit keeps rocks in there so they can efficiently digest what's in their ration. The turkey poults have been here for a few days now. So I will take you and show you how we do our brooder chores with them. They are more labor intensive than our chicken brooder chores, just because these, this is a very manual brooder that we have. We have multiple gallon waterers set up that we take out, we, we rinse and clean them off, give them fresh water and place them back down on the floor. We do that twice a day. With their feed pans, we top dress the feed so that attracts the turkey poults back to it. If there's anything dirty in there, we'll go ahead and pick that out at that time. We will put down fresh peat moss in areas that need it. Using peat moss, uh, you have to use very little of it. You have to replenish it, not very often. And so sometimes I'll just put it around where the waters have been, if there's been a spilt water or water leak or anything like that. We will walk along the turkey poults just to make sure that everyone is doing okay. If they're piling up in a certain area, we'll go and, and separate them so they'll get up and go and eat and drink and, and rest someplace else. Uh, we will also check our thermometer, make sure that the temperature in here is okay. Since we are using the heat lamps, we have to keep a really close eye on the temperature, make sure it's not too hot and not too cold and that it's not varying more than one or two degrees at a time. For the first week, we want it to be around 95 degrees. And then after that, we can start letting it get just a little bit cooler, only one degree at a time. So we'll check the heat lamps, make sure that they're at a proper height, make sure the turkey poults aren't trying to stay away from them because that would indicate that it's too hot under there. We wanna make sure that the turkey poults aren't gathering in one specific area that would show that, that they're cold or that they're, they're piling for some reason. If they're all underneath the heat lamps, then they're cold and we need to increase the heat in the brooder a little bit. If anyone is uh, off by themselves or like hunched over and just doesn't look very good, uh, picking them up, giving them some attention, dipping their beak in some water, placing them on the food, uh, just to help give them a little boost of energy. Since the turkeys have been here for a few days, they have graduated from having the roll of cardboard on the floor with feet on top of it. And we've placed four red hanging feeders in here. And those hold about 35 pounds of feed. So we can go ahead and fill those up and that will make sure that there's fresh feed access all times. And we'll just come in and shake it down and, and refill it as needed. These are also the red feeders that they will use during the other stages of their brooding and out on pasture. So we're just getting them used to those feeders now. Our, our water system is labor intensive because we're using the individual gallon waterers. That is one thing I, I would have as an improvement with our brooder is to put in an automatic water line. There's specific turkey water lines and they come with little water bowls that the turkeys are attracted to and they'll drink out of. But with our watering system, we need to make sure that the turkeys never run out of water. So if I come in here at one point and a lot of their gallon waters are empty, that means that I need to provide them with more water containers so that they always have access to water. Before we leave our brooder, we make sure and we go and record everything on our record sheet. So if we had any dead turkey poults, we will record that. We'll record if we put down any peat moss and then how many buckets of feed we used. And we do that because we want to keep good track of what inputs we're using. So how much feed they are consuming, how much peat moss we have to use throughout their whole brooding time, and then just keep track of any mortality so that we can know how many turkeys we have. The turkeys are now just over two weeks old and they have graduated into their second brooder room. So we gave them access to the second room first through just a little flap on the door to help keep the major heat in that back 
first room and then they can come and go into the second room as they wanted to. The second room we set up just like that first room. So we had some of the heat lamps hanging from the ceiling so that there was still a good amount of heat in the second room, but we are starting to gradually decrease that heat. So each week we need to decrease the overall brooder temperature by five degrees. When we're using the heat lamps, you can do that just by raising that heat lamp a notch or two up the chain, and that will decrease the, the temperature on the pult level. We are still using our, our gallon and our five gallon waterers that we have to take out and bring in uh, each chore time. But now that the turkeys are a little bit taller and bigger, we have put some smaller cinder blocks underneath those waterers that allows the turkeys to, to drink at their shoulder level. And it helps keep the, the inside, the water trough area clean and there's less peat moss getting in there. So the turkey poults have access to, to more water all the time. It's very important that we have extra waters, that the turkeys always have access to water because it's going to be their water consumption that drives their feed consumption. Also in the second room, we have a few different types of feeders. We still have those rectangle feeder pans out there that the turkeys really enjoy eating out of. We have the red hanging feeders that the turkeys will use out on pasture. And then we've also just gotten a few of the Featherman feeders, which are a five gallon bucket with a, a green bottom that, that screws onto there. Oh, something that, that we have to use with those five gallon buckets is actually putting a lid on top of there. So once the turkeys get to about two weeks old, they are more adventurous and they really like to perch on top of things. So you'll see them uh, behind me, we have this, this shavings wall that gives us access into the brooder without actually stepping into the turkey area at first. Uh, the turkeys will come and sit up here and, and perch up here. And so in this second room, the turkeys have access to the corners. And that's because the chances of them piling has significantly decreased as long as we are watching the temperature and the turkeys don't get cold and there's not a draft. Uh, once the turkeys are at about this two week age, if they have something to, to fly up on and perch on, then they will. And if those corner boards are accessible, there's a chance of them perching on there, falling behind that board, and more and more turkeys piling on there, and then suffocation can happen with those turkeys on the bottom. Uh, this second room also has those exhaust fans, just the same way as, as the first room does. And there's two exhaust fans in room number two, two exhaust fans in room number one. Room number two also has a few more windows that we can open and close depending on what the weather is like outside. And so it's this room number two where we really start to acclimate those turkeys to the outside temperature and to the outside environment. So during the day when the weather is really nice, we can go ahead and unplug those heat lamps. And then if it's going to be cooler temperatures at nighttime, we can plug those back in so that that temperature stays within a good range for those turkeys. When they are between three and four weeks old, depending on the outside temperature, we will be giving them access to an outside covered pen. And then following that, they will move out to our pasture schooners and that will be between four and five weeks of age. So every Tuesday that we have poultry here at Heifer Ranch, we take weights on those birds and we record them in just a simple, small notebook. And you can see all the ones that we've taken before. And what we do with this notebook is we write what batch it is. So for example, this is our third turkey batch of the year. Uh, when we do our poultry batches, we just say batch one, two, three, et cetera. We have the date. We have what breed they are. So these are broad-breasted whites. On this paper, we also keep track of the feed consumption for that whole week, the mortalities for that week, and then if we had to call any birds that week. And then we will use the rest of this page to record the weights of our turkeys. We take 15 weights. What we like to do is to go and find the largest bird that we can see, the smallest bird that we can see, and then just the other 13 will be uh, average or just uh, random birds. And that will help give us a good average weight of our whole flock. That way we can see how they're growing, 
how much weight they're gaining um, to see and make sure that they are on target for their scheduled processing date. To take their weights, we just use a fishing scale. You can get this off of Amazon. I believe they're like eight or $10. One of these will last us a couple seasons. You know, you just need to replace the battery. We just use a five gallon bucket that has a handle. Uh, we have a, a ton of those hanging around. And then we keep all of that together in just a simple pencil pouch that you can buy from the store. That way we're not trying to go around and find everything. Things don't get lost, it all stays here. And we hang it on the wall um, in the office when we're done. And so to, to weigh the turkeys, we have the fishing scale connected to just some regular rope. And I like to tie it up so that the bucket is always hanging. I don't have to reset the scale throughout my, the 15 weights and I, I don't have to hang on to the scale, attach the turkey in the bucket. You know, everything is ready to go once I have that turkey in hand. So the first thing you wanna do is turn your scale on with the bucket on your scale. That way it will zero itself out. Then you are not adding the, the weight of the bucket to the weight of the turkey. This will just give you the weight of the turkey. Okay, so it's at zero right now. I will go and find a turkey. When you have your birds, whether it's turkey or chickens, you want to use both hands. Make sure you control their wings so they don't try to flap around and get away from you. They don't hurt themselves or you. Um, I like to get control of their legs with my pinky fingers, okay? And then you just simply put them in the bucket with turkeys, they can be a little jumpy, so I like to just keep my hand in the bucket, not on the turkey, but just to help prevent him from trying to jump out. This turkey weighs 1.95 pounds. So you can just take your bucket off your scale, you know, let your turkey or your chicken walk out of the bucket, replace your bucket, and you're ready to go for the next turkey. Put your second turkey in there. With this scale, all I have to do is re-push the on button and it will automatically start weighing this turkey. This turkey is 2.04 pounds. So we will do that all the way for 15 turkeys just to help us get a good average of, of how much our flock weighs. So we are doing batches of 500, so we're just doing 15 out of 500. Um, it doesn't seem like very many, but when you're going around trying to catch 15 turkeys as they get older, uh, 15 sometimes feels like a lot. The turkey poults are now five weeks old. They have had access to their outdoor covered pen and the outdoor pasture at their brooder for two weeks now. So starting at three weeks, we started giving them access to outside. Now we know that they have been acclimated to the outdoor temperature. They have lost all of their down and now have their adult white feathers in. So they'll be better able to regulate their own body temperature outdoors. Um, something that we look for before we put them out to pasture is we look at the weather forecast. So we wanna make sure that there's not going to be a, a rainstorm coming in in the next few days or significantly low temperatures at nighttime or anything like that. So the turkeys are gonna be pretty vulnerable going from their brooder out to pasture. So we just need to make sure that we protect them and that we keep them warm and protected from the elements as much as possible. So just keep an eye on the forecast before putting them out to pasture is a good idea. So before loading up turkeys for pasture, you wanna make sure that your schooner is all ready to go. We already have the, the water bowls cleaned, turned on, make sure there's no water leaks. Our feeders are out there filled up. Once we get the turkey poults out there, we will adjust the height of both of those to make sure that they are at the proper height for these specific birds. To collect the birds and get them out to the schooner as safe and as efficiently as possible, we use these crates right behind me. These are game bird crates from 3T Products. I believe they're out of Iowa. 
Uh, we use these also for our chickens, so they have multi-purpose here. What I really like about these is that they are nice and small. With the turkeys, we are going to put five turkeys per crate compared to 10 chickens per crate. Uh, the turkeys are a little bit bigger than the chickens and we need to have enough space to be able to push that flap door up so that we can allow the turkeys to come out once we're at the schooner. And so as we're putting the turkeys in there, we can just use uh, our hands to put the turkeys in there and the door will close behind them, making sure that the turkeys can't get out. It's very fast and efficient. Um, I ordered some, some more of these so that we could put all chickens and all turkeys out at, at one time rather than having to do multiple loads. With the new crates that I got, I made sure to get flap doors on both ends of the crate compared to the crates I bought first, which is one flap door and one hinge door. Uh, we don't really use the hinge door at all. And when we have the ones with the hinges, we have to you know, really focus and make sure that we have the flap door on the right side and getting the birds out and things like that. Um, with two flap doors, you know, it's easy. You don't have the wrong end. You can put birds in and take birds out either end um, the same way. So I really like the, these smaller crates. They have a solid floor on the bottom so that no, no toes or fingernails will get caught um, during transport. So I, I really like these game bird crates. We will also use these bigger yellow chicken crates. A lot of people will put their birds out to pasture in these and that is completely fine. If you already have them on your farm, use what you have. Um, just be aware that some feet and, and toes can come out these holes on the bottom and get caught. So you just have to really listen and, uh, to the turkeys or to the chickens and, and they'll tell you if that's happening. We do use these yellow crates to make a barrier. So what we want to do is to create a smaller space and have that space filled with the turkeys. And then we can go and take our smaller crates and, and fill that with the turkeys rather than having to chase the turkeys around and catch them one at a time. We have them contained in one area. It's less stressful and it's more efficient that way. Another positive to these game bird crates is that they will stack on top of each other and lock into place. So as we're, we're driving to the pasture or something like that, um, they, they won't be sliding around on top of each other. They'll, they'll be stuck in place. We won't stack them this high. We'll only have about two or three crates high at a time. When we bring our turkey poults from the brooder out to pasture, we will place them in our schooner. This structure is 20 feet wide by 48 feet long. And on the inside of it, there's no crossbars going through at the level of the turkeys. That is something that I really like about this structure compared to the prairie schooner we use for our chickens. This allows the turkeys to, to walk about that the area without having any obstacles to have to go under or over. That makes moving the schooner and moving the turkeys forward a lot easier. They can immediately move to the front of the schooner and chase those, those bugs and get that fresh grass rather than having to get over those bars. The structure is more of a hoop. There is a lot less hardware that goes into it. There are five separate hoop pieces and then two ends. Uh, those ends all come in already put together. So there's very little labor involved in putting this structure together. We obtained these schooner kits from the Yoder family who are metal fabricators out of Missouri.
These kits also come with the tarp that's over top of them. They're a little bit different than, than the billboard tarps or the other tarps we use for our prairie schooners. They have uh, two hems with curtain rods that fit in there. And something very important that took me a few months to figure out is that you want to order a tarp that is a foot or two longer than your actual structure. So the tarp on the schooner behind me is actually 50 feet long instead of 48. And that just gives you that extra overhang. Otherwise, we used to have the problem with the tarp drooping and just not being tight enough and coming off the ends. On the ends of this schooner, we put two by eight treated boards and we just hang those on with, with some wire. You can use a number of different things. Um, you can also use a number of different ends instead of just treated wood. Those boards will allow the schooner to travel over various terrain and still close that gap. We also attach some old conveyor belt to the bottom of there and that just helps keep the turkeys in when they're smaller and helps deter ground predators. There's also a number of different materials you can use. Um, in the past we've used extra schooner tarp, we've used um, the, the baseboards from, from bathrooms and kitchens and things like that. Something that's important for your structure is to make sure that you have good solid fencing. We use PVC coated chicken wire. And then on top of that, we also add a layer of field fence. And that is just adding extra protection to, to our schooners to keep the turkey safe from predators and to keep the turkeys from getting out. Since the tarp on these schooners only go up a few feet, you only need to attach one layer of chicken wire to that first purlin. Um, so I, I believe that's about four feet high, so there's no need to buy six feet wire or anything like that. To help keep the tarp tension over top of the schooner, we just got some cheap ratchet straps from the local hardware store, and we connect that to the curtain rod, and then we can go around and tighten that as we need to. This is just a simple way of keeping that tarp on and a simple way of keeping it tight. We use a homemade water system for all of our poultry. And with our turkey schooner, we have it across from each other in the middle of the schooner so that all the birds have access to that at all times. And then we hang our feeders on either side of those water systems. We'll attach our hanging feeders to the top purlin of our schooner. We use little giant game bird water bowls for our homemade water system. There's also bell waterers. You can get water nipple systems. There's a whole bunch of different ways that you can water your birds. You just need to make sure that you have enough water space to water all of your turkeys at the same time. We move this schooner forward with using uh, a 3 4 inch cable and a clevis, and we just attach it to either side of the schooner. And then when we get to the end of the pasture and we're ready to turn around, we can just disconnect that and move it to the opposite end and start moving forward. To raise pastured poultry, you don't necessarily have to have a large schooner. It all depends on the size batches that you will be raising. You can simply use a chicken tractor of any different style. You can use a Joel Salatin style pen or you can use a, a stationary pen and allow your turkeys to go out and forage. So pick a structure that works best for you and your farm and your farm terrain and whatever size batch you'll be raising. Turkeys are notorious for not being very good at going and drinking water. And so when we have our turkeys out on pasture and when they have access to go out and range and forage, I like to give them water that is outside of their schooner. I want to encourage them to be outside and grazing. And so to do that, I just give them one of these black rubber tubs. I fill it with fresh water every day, sometimes even twice a day. And to help encourage them to come and find the water and drink the water, I just purchased one of these $20 solar bird bath fountains. I got it off of Amazon. I put that fountain in the water and that creates water movement. And so that's going to make the turkeys curious to see what it is. That will encourage them to come over and start drinking the water, and that will help increase their water intake. Since we will be raising three batches of turkeys this year, that has us raising them in the spring and then also in the fall. And both of those seasons, at the beginning and at the end of those, 
we have some cooler weather. So it's very important for us to make sure that we keep the turkeys comfortable. And to do that, we add plastic fronts to the, all the schooners. So we put it on the front and on the back. This year, we are just using old greenhouse plastic from our garden. So this is all going to be repurposed. We are attaching it to the schooners with metal channeling and then with wiggle wire. So we can easily put this up and then we can easily take it down and store it so we can put it on when the next season comes along. To attach the plastic, we have channeling at the top and then channeling at the bottom. And then there's other places we need to attach it. We'll just simply use zip ties. On your farm, you can use a number of different materials. You can use tarps, you could use um, plywood or anything that you have laying around. You don't have to go out and buy something new just to, to cover the ends of the schooners. Having this plastic on the schooners will help keep the heat in the schooners at nighttime when those temperatures can get really low. It will help keep the turkeys more comfortable and help with your feed conversion, especially in the winter season. And then again, in the spring season, when we'll have those cooler temperatures and precipitation. Behind me, we have what we use as our turkey sick pen. And so those of you that have raised turkeys, you may know that they can be very aggressive towards one another. They can beat each other up. And so when we have that occur, we have this sick pen and it is actually just one of our old chicken tractors. It's made out of PVC. I believe it, it's 10 by 12. So we used to raise our, our broilers in these a, a number of years ago, but it comes in great for a, a sick pen. Because what we want to do is if we have turkeys that aren't feeling well or like I said are getting beat up and need to be taken away from the majority of the flock, we can put them into this sick pen to keep them away from getting harmed more. We'll give them fresh food and fresh water. They're still out on the grass so they get moved every day to fresh grass. And what's really important is that we want these turkeys to still be able to, to socialize within the rest of the turkey flock. And so we move this sick pen along with our schooners. So when our big turkeys are out roaming during the day, they can uh, be fence to fence with these turkeys that are in this pen. And so we're not taking them far away, isolating them at all. We want them to still be a part of the group just so that they are not in direct contact with the rest of the flock. When we first move our turkey poults out to pasture, when we are doing morning chores, that will consist of bringing out our tractor and moving the schooner forward one full space. So we wanna give those turkeys fresh grass. We wanna get them off of their manure from yesterday. We wanna use them as a management tool to help build our soil, to leave nutrients behind where they've been. After we move the schooner forward, it is important that we walk around the whole schooner. We look for any way that the turkey can get out or any way that a predator can get in. So that's gonna be along the sides and along the front and the back. If we have spaces or gaps, we will fill those either with a tarp or shavings bags that we use in our brooder or anything that we can get our hands on to help plug that hole. We will bring out five gallon buckets full of their feed ration. We'll go through, fill up all of their hanging feeders, make sure that they are adjusted to the proper height, which will be at the turkey shoulders, so where their neck and their back meet together. We will dump out their water bowls. We'll take a brush and clean out any leftover residue. We'll also adjust those water bowls to make sure they are at the proper height for those turkeys which is also at their shoulder. You wanna make sure that's at the shoulder of the average turkey. So you're gonna have turkeys that may be bigger and maybe smaller. So you just need to think about that as you're adjusting the heights of both of those systems. In addition to having hanging feeders for their feed, we have two hanging feeders per schooner for their grit. Those are the metal galvanized feeders that we have in their schooner. You don't have to use a hanging feeder for the grit. You can simply put it in a five gallon bucket or any other container, as long as they have access to that. Since we're raising turkeys through nine months of the year, there may be some days where we have to put their schooner tarp sides down if it's raining or if it's really cold. So it's important that we pay attention to the weather to make sure that the turkeys stay as comfortable as possible 
in the cooler or the wet months, we will also add additional hay into their schooner so that they can bed down and keep themselves warm. In the warmer months, when the sun is very hot on our schooners, we put in aluminum coated bubble insulation and we just attach that to the inside of the schooner right underneath the tarp. So that will help reflect the sunlight and help keep the inside of the schooner a little bit cooler and keep the birds more comfortable. As the turkeys reach the age where they are ready to go out in day range at that six to eight week mark, we will begin to move their schooners in the evening time. And that allows them to have a fresh place to lay down and to bed down. That helps encourage them to come back into the schooner because they think that they're getting access to fresh grass. Because that's what they were used to when we would move them in the mornings. We're getting access to that fresh grass. For morning chores, once the turkeys are able to day range, we come out here, we'll still feed them. We will still clean their waterers, but we don't move that schooner. We simply open up their doors and we either have a ramp that they can go up the ramp and to get out of their schooner and outside to their range. Or we have a turkey door that we have fabricated on either end of the schooner. So that makes it easy for the turkeys to just simply walk outside of the schooner. They don't have any obstacle like that ramp to go up and to go back down. For evening chores, turkeys are very easy to control and to herd back into the schooner. So we can either have them go back up that ramp into their schooner or herd them through their turkey door. We will close all the turkeys back into their schooner before we move it forward because we don't want any turkeys to be in front of that schooner and maybe to accidentally harm them or run them over or anything like that. Part of morning chores when the turkeys have access to the range is going to be cleaning out that black Rubbermaid water basin, giving them fresh water, making sure that that solar fountain is working if it's a nice sunny day, and then also putting out full five gallon buckets of feed. So I want to encourage the turkeys to go outside to forage. I don't want them to have to go back inside that schooner to get food to eat or to get water to drink. I want to give them access to that outside so they can be outside as long as possible. Once these turkeys reach their eight week mark, they are very hardy birds. Uh, they're pretty much bulletproof at that point. It's getting them from day one to that eight weeks that can be kind of troublesome. We will raise them until they are 16 weeks old. That's when we'll send them to processing. We want them to weigh about 18 pounds so that we'll get a, around a 14 pound carcass. Once our turkeys become too big to put them in a five gallon bucket, we move to using just an ordinary digital bathroom scale. I place it on a piece of plywood so that it has a flat surface and then I will catch turkeys and, and hold them on the scale with myself and then just a little bit of simple math subtracting my weight we will be able to get um, an estimate of how much the turkeys weigh. The best way to hold on to a turkey once they're very large like this is to grab the base of their wings where their wings meet their back and then there's a, a nice solid big area that you can hold on to their wings and you want to hold them close to your body because they may try to flap away and you want to hold their feet uh, away from you as well so they don't try to scratch you. That was a 22 pound turkey and so we are going to catch a few more so that we can get a good average uh, we're going to look for the biggest turkeys and the smallest turkeys so that we can develop the average of what our turkey flock weighs. We keep track of records for morning and afternoon chores. Those records include the number of buckets that we fed them, any mortalities or any calls that we had to perform. If we notice any birds getting picked on or having a sickness, we will go ahead and take those birds out of the flock and we'll put them in our sick pen. We will have that sick pen still close and still integrated with our turkey flock. It will just allow those turkeys to have protection from the rest of the flock as they are healing. We order turkey hens rather than turkey toms, and that's because we want them to finish at that 18 to 20 pound range. The turkey toms will get bigger than that. And I've also found that the turkey toms can be more aggressive than the hens even though it is the fact that all turkeys can be aggressive to one another.
For our pastured poultry, we want to make sure that they have access to fresh grass, sunshine, fresh air, and they get exercise. We allow them to day range. So a part of chores is we set up a poultry netting big enough to allow all the turkeys to go out in day range. We use poultry netting from Premier One Fencing. The poultry netting that we use is 48 inches tall. They also have one that's 42 inches tall. The purpose of this netting is to allow the turkeys to, to go out and forage to get more area to exercise, but to also keep them more contained within a space so that it's easier for us to put them back in at nighttime. That netting also helps prevent um, ground predators. It will not prevent any aerial predators. We like to start giving the turkeys access to the netting anywhere between six to eight weeks old. If you are at the six week mark, you need to make sure that they're not too small to actually go through the squares of the netting. If you wait longer than eight weeks, sometimes the turkeys are, are too big and they just don't respect that, that perimeter and they will literally walk right over top of that poultry netting. So getting them used to that poultry netting between six to eight weeks is a good window. The poultry netting can be electrified. It's the vertical wire that has the metal filament going through there. So that's the one that carries the voltage. The horizontal ones and the one on the very bottom does not carry any voltage. Uh, you can use a plug-in charger. You can use a solar charger. You can use a charger that's connected to a car battery. Um, anything that, that you use to electrify other fences on your farm will work just fine. When the turkeys are first getting introduced to the electric fence, we will put a charger on there so that it carries a voltage. Once they get a little bit bigger, we tend to not keep that charger on there. We'll use our solar chargers elsewhere because we use them for all of our animal species here. Uh, once the turkeys understand what that fence is, that that fence is their barrier, that that's supposed to keep them in, um, they usually don't mess with that fence at all. If your fence isn't set up properly or, or tight enough, or if there's something on the other side of the fence that the turkeys really want and they're big enough, they can walk right over top of that fence, whether there's a charge on it or not. The turkeys are not as affected by that voltage going through the fence as other animal species are. Turkeys are very big foragers. They like to go out and eat grass and seeds and the different bugs that they'll find they can consume up to 40% of their diet just from the, the greens and, and the fresh around them. We use this netting for our turkeys specifically. We don't day range any of our chickens. The poultry netting that we use from Premier One, we get the 160 foot length. We will use three rolls of that netting when we graze our batch of 500 turkeys. I prefer the netting that only has the one spike compared to the two spikes. Um, some of our ground is, is rocky and can be hard. And so trying to put two spikes into the ground is even more difficult than just trying to, to do the one spike. So I personally prefer the one spike netting. These rolls of 160 foot at the 48 inches tall are about 24 pounds. So it, it could be a little bit heavier. If you go with the 42, inch one i think those are only about 23 pounds so just slightly lighter you can use that 42 inch one because when using the broad breasted white turkeys that we're raising they are too heavy to fly so we don't need to worry about them trying to fly over top of that fence if you're going to be raising other turkeys or heritage turkeys those ones can fly so you may just need to um, clip their wings or use a different way of day ranging them when setting up the poultry netting, there is definitely a skill to it and an art to it, and that is going to take time to perfect. I still don't have all of that under control. And so you do want to make sure that you have a nice tight fence. Um, we don't really care about if it's straight or if it looks really pretty, as long as it keeps our turkeys into their day ranging area, that's perfectly fine for us. When we are setting up a new day range area for the turkeys, the way we like to do that is to connect the netting to the corners of our schooners. And we can do that since we don't put voltage through the netting after the turkeys are used to it. If we are trying to put some voltage through there, then we'll just put a T-post in the ground 
and use some string or some rope and tie it to that T-post so that it has a nice sturdy end that can help keep it tight. So starting our range area with the majority of the schooner outside and just one end of the schooner having access to that range area. For the next move, we will move that schooner into that range area, one full move, and then we'll close that fence behind there. We will progress the turkey schooner through their range area until we get to the other side. And we'll continue that schooner through the other side until that back of the schooner is the only thing that has access to the turkey range. We can set up a big enough area we can get both schooners through there and only have to reset up our fence twice a week. So we can get anywhere from three to four full schooner moves through our day range area. When it's time for us to set up a whole new area, the way we do that is we disconnect all the poultry netting. We'll pull each spike out of the ground and lay it flat. We will come back and pick up one post at a time and we will layer them on top of each other, sort of like a book. And we want all of the spikes at one end. Once you have collected that whole fence, you can just simply lift it up and carry it to where you wanna start your fence again. You drop that first post at your schooner and you can walk backwards. And as the slack is coming out of your fence, you can just keep dropping one post right after the other. And you can walk out that 164 feet in just a few minutes. We'll go back and with that first post, we will connect it to either the schooner or to a T-post for stability. And then we'll just keep walking, pulling out that tension and putting one spike in the ground at a time. When we're giving our turkeys day range space, I like to make sure they have access to at least one or two big shade trees. So that way, especially in the summertime, they have access to shade. They really like um, dust bathing and things like that underneath the trees. If you don't have access to shade trees, that's okay. The turkeys will still really enjoy having the access to forage outside. Since we're using three different sections of netting, we can manipulate where we're putting that fencing to include or not include certain areas. And if the ends don't meet up perfectly, we can just go pick up a few posts and just move them in or out to wherever we need them to be. The turkeys are at their 16 week mark. So that is the age that we want to process them. We are aiming for about an 18 to 20 pound live weight. And then that will translate to about a 14, 15 pound carcass. Uh, so the turkeys are getting ready to get loaded up onto a trailer and go to processing. And so to get ready for that, we will take their feed away about 12 to 14 hours before processing. But we also need to keep in mind that we need to take the feed away far enough in advance so that the turkeys will only have access to water for about four hours before either they go to sleep for the night or before they get loaded onto the trailer. And in the morning, we also limit the amount of feed that we're going to give them. We want them to have access to all the food that they want to consume, but we don't want to have leftover or excess feed in their feeders when we need to take them away. So that's just something to think about the day they're going to processing. So once the, the feeders are out, we'll also move the schooners to the best place possible so that when the trailer gets here, they can just back right up nice and easy for whoever's hauling your birds. We have the inside of our schooners set up so that we can load them onto the trailer the least stressful way possible. So inside we are using a ramp and this ramp we've actually made for our pigs to get onto a trailer. So it's multi-purpose. We have outdoor carpet nailed onto there and then on top of the outdoor carpet we have some wood cleat and so that helps the the ramp from getting slippery so the animals always have some sort of traction while they're going up the ramp and then that also helps the turkeys get to the height of the trailer so they don't have to try to to jump in there we're not forcing them to to really get in there they're walking up there and it's it's not stressful whatsoever we have old bed frames that we've made a little alley next to the ramp so that the turkeys, once they're on the ramp, they'll just go forward, they can't get off the ramp. And then at the base of the ramp, we have two of the bed frames fanning out a little bit to make it more of a funnel. And when the trailer gets here, the trailer will back up to the door of the schooner. We'll have one person on the trailer 
that is helping facilitate the turkeys to finish getting on the trailer and to go forward. And that person is also counting the number of turkeys because our trailer is going to have three different compartments. So we need to know how many turkeys are in each compartment to make sure that we're following the amount of space per bird for transport. And so the other people will be in the schooner with some blind boards that we also use for our pigs and just helping uh, push and, and herd those turkeys forward up towards the ramp. And we are doing this about an hour before sunset. We want the turkeys to be leaving our farm as the sun is going down, because that is their natural bedtime. Thank you so much for watching our YouTube video. I hope you're able to learn something or take something away from this. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you have any questions, leave a comment below or email us at heiferusa at heifer.org.